that election in Toronto St. Paul's I think is a, is a sounding board that is telling us that listen your, your day is here. Do you think this party can turn things around the way things are right now in time for the next election? If they do I think it'll be somewhat of a miracle. Things have gone from bad to worse to even worse than that as Liberal MPs are now announcing they're bailing out of the Liberal Party and not running in the next election anymore. The captain is going down with the Titanic and the rats are scurrying to get off. Let's take a look. Justin Trudeau says he is committed to staying on as Prime Minister after his party's shocking by-election loss in Toronto last week. He spoke to CBC News as part of an annual Canada Day interview yesterday. There's always going to be lots of reflection after, after a tough loss, but there's also so much to do, and I am committed to doing the work of building a better Canada every single day. So I look forward to uh, next year's Canada Day, and I look forward to many more Canada Days. Trudeau's comments come as he faces growing criticism from within his party. Since the by-election loss, current and former MPs have called for Trudeau to resign as leader. On Friday, Liberal backbencher Wayne Long emailed the entire Liberal caucus calling for Trudeau to go. It read, for the future of our party and for the good of our country, we need new leadership and a new direction. The voters have spoken loud and clear. They want change. I agree. That same day, a small group of Liberal MPs wrote a letter to Liberal Caucus Chair Brenda Shanahan calling for an immediate in-person caucus meeting, saying, we have spoken with dozens of our caucus colleagues, and among them, there is a clear consensus. We must have a national discussion about how we serve the needs of the Liberal Party of Canada, our government, and most importantly, the people of Canada. Newfoundland and Labrador Liberal MP Ken McDonald supports the call for national caucus meeting, and McDonald has been a vocal critic of the Prime Minister in the past, and he joins me now from St. John's. Ken McDonald, good to see you again. Good to hear from you as well. Uh, I want to talk about the Prime Minister's future in just a second, but you revealed today that your future as a Liberal MP is soon going to be over, that you're, you met with the Prime Minister th last month and told him you weren't running again. What did you tell Justin Trudeau in that meeting? Uh, I actually met with him on June 17th. Uh, I, I requested the meeting, and uh, I just felt uh, out of respect. Uh, he's treated me with respect as far as I'm concerned, and I wanted to do the same. Uh, I advised him that it was my intention not to have my name on the ballot in the next election in 2025. Is this a, you've been a critic of the Prime Minister and some of his policies, is it because of that or there's a lot of talk that you may run provincially for Andrew Fury's Liberals, maybe in the riding of CBS? No, I, I think in any party you're going to have uh, disagreements between the caucus members and whoever the leader may be. But uh, this decision was a decision that myself and uh, my wife Trudy made quite some time ago. Uh, when I first got into this, we figured I'd do two terms and get out. Mm -hmm. So it ended up being three elections, and I decided that it's time to let people know that I will not be running the next time. If uh, I, wanted, I did that early enough so as people could come forward if they're interested in running under the Liberal banner. And if they're not, well, the party will have to come up with somebody, but it won't be me. So here's the thing about politics. If you are a good MP and your community respects you, oftentimes they will reelect you just for you. Like they don't necessarily care about the party. They want you to represent them because you do such a good job in the community. You do such a good job taking care of your constituents. And the fact that many of these veteran MPs are saying, I'm not running for the Liberal Party again, I think that sends a really, really powerful message because they're saying that even though I've been in this community for a while and I've been representing this community well for a long time, because of the Liberal banner, I'm not going to get reelected because you guys have done such a horrible job at the top that it's affecting us on an individual level. Yeah, and I think um, uh, the uh, previous, you know, liberal incumbent of Toronto St. Paul, um, MP Bennett, um, who had had that riding for almost 30 years, um, I, I think she would have gone down if, uh, if there was, you know, an election that same day. I don't think it would have mattered which candidate ran. So 
I think it's a really good point. And the liberal brand has been poisoned to such a degree that A, it doesn't matter if Trudeau is the head of the liberal party or not. The liberals are still going to lose the next election and they're still going to lose it large. The only difference is, is how large is that large going to be? <laughs> because if they do have Trudeau step down and they do have another leader come in, as long as it's not somebody like Christian Freeland or the Chihuahua, <laughs> I think it's going to, you know, it, it will mitigate their losses, but they're still going to lose. So you have these, these, these MPs, as Fox said, longtime liberals, obviously respected in their community. And they're just saying, you know what? I don't want to go through that election loss. Thank you very much. Well, can you blame them? It's a lot of work to run an election campaign. It's a lot of money. Um, like just the hours and the work that, that is put into it is astronomical. Um, we spoke to uh, the nominee for the Canada riding, and you guys are going to see that interview coming up soon. And he had told us that he so far has knocked on 15,000 doors in his riding. That's a lot of homes. That's a lot of people that he's speaking to each and every single day. And it's not even election time. Folks. Right. So, um, and there's a potential of around 100,000 people in the riding. So, and, and they want to get up to as many, many doors as they can. So, yeah, the, the, these, these longtime MPs, given the choice, they probably want to end on their terms and end in a... I would say dignified fashion. And unfortunately, what they're doing is they're handing it over to some some young buck who wants to run for the liberals and thinks they're going to do a good job. And they're walking into a firing squad. And I should correct myself. It's a district in the provincial legislature, of course, in Newfoundland and Labrador. Are you going to run for Andrew Fury I, in the provincial election? I, I haven't given a definite yes yet, and I haven't given a definite no. I've been asked. And uh, most people already know that, and, and the Prime Minister knows that as well. And, uh, but uh, I haven't given a definite yes. Okay. Of course, it depends largely on when the next provincial election will be. And uh, where, where I would be asked to run, I don't know. It probably will be in my home riding or home district of Conception Bay South. But uh, if it is, so be it. And uh, if I put my name forward, I'll work hard as I did as a federal MP to get elected, I'll do the same to try and get elected provincially if that's the path I choose. Okay, let's talk about federal politics again. Uh, when Wayne Long sent his email to the caucus on Friday, you were the very first uh, MP to reply all. You said, well said, with an exclamation point. Does that mean you agree with Wayne Long that the Liberals need a new leader? It, it, it means that I agree there has to be a conversation. When it comes to who the leader is, whether it's Justin Trudeau or somebody else, uh, I, I've said many times before that if the Prime Minister decides to leave, that's his decision to make. Uh, but I do think it is badly needed to try and calm the waters, I guess, to a certain effect, is that we need to have an in-person caucus and allow people to speak frankly. That election in Toronto-St. Paul's, I think, is, uh, is a sounding board that is telling us that, listen, your, your day is here. And uh, if things don't change, you're not going to go no further. So where do you think the majority of caucus is? I mean, you, you've said in the past you thought the prime minister and this government may have hit their best before date. This was a year ago you said this. Where do you think the majority of caucus is right now in the wake of what happened in Toronto-St. Paul's? I think there's a lot of caucus members who are nervous. Uh, do I think they still a, a large number still stand with the prime minister? Yes, I do. And uh, But I think the having a in-person caucus meeting would allow everybody to speak their mind and with no repercussions because mm -hmm. the, the conversations might be somewhat difficult at times. But uh, and in the past, uh, the Prime Minister has always been there to listen uh, to individuals or as a group. And uh, we've had uh, several meetings as them with Atlantic Caucus and even with Newfoundland Caucus. We've had discussions with them, some difficult discussions and some pretty cordial ones. So you say a large number of MPs uh, still support the Prime Minister. Do you think it's a majority? Because this has been the sense I've gotten from talking to MPs, that there's anxiety, they want change, though they don't know exactly what that change is, but still personally loyal to Justin Trudeau. How do you assess that? Uh, I assess it that 
all people are asking for right now, for the most part, is to have that in-person caucus meeting. Now, what comes out of that, or who speaks up, or who says what, that'll determine what will happen going forward, I guess, to some degree. So this is very telling. Um, McDonald has been critical of Justin Trudeau in the past. And I think it's interesting that, you know, while he's in front of the media, um, he's trying to downplay it a little bit. But um, he's not saying that it's a majority of, of people in, in his belief that are still supporting the prime minister. That's an easy answer. My guess is it's just the cabinet. I think so. Like, I, I imagine that most of the backbenchers are just fed up with what's going on because probably when many of them signed up for this party, they thought it was a center left party, not a far left party. And not only that, but Trudeau's just driven it downhill and it keeps going down and down and down. Well, and McDonald even said that Toronto St. Paul's by-election, I don't know if he, this slipped or, or not, but he said that um, that's, he basically said that's the end of the line. That's the sounding board that you're at the end. Well, when you lose a riding that you've had for 30 years, like, like, that's a wake up call. And the fact that Trudeau won't even sit down with his caucus and listen to what their concerns are, that's a huge red flag. Well, here's here's the problem with it. The, the, he's in a no win scenario because the problem is, is if he calls an impromptu caucus meeting, there's going to be a media frenzy over it. Too bad. Let them have a frenzy. Right. Right. You know, as a leader, you need to listen to your employees. I know they're not employees in the true sense of the word, but you guys know what I mean. He needs to listen to those MPs because they're the ones at the ground level. They're the ones who are going to be speaking to constituents all across the country. They're the ones receiving the emails from from viewers, from listeners, from constituents. They know what's going on. And the fact that he will not listen, that's a huge red flag. Well, and the other thing is that so McDonald says, well, you know, when we've had these caucus meetings, you know, Trudeau has, has shown that he's been willing to listen. That's not what we hear from everybody else. That, that's you talking to the media, Ken. And the fact that he won't sit down and have a caucus meeting, I think that proves that he's not willing to listen. Yeah. And the thing about life and, and politics, too, but the thing about life is that you can often learn more from failure than you can from success. So if Trudeau was smart, he would look at the loss in Toronto St. Paul's and say, what did we do wrong? What are the people saying? What are the constituents saying? What are Canadians saying? And how can we learn and fix that? But it seems like he's being so stubborn and thinks that, you know, he's doing the right thing and Canadians will just have to get used to it, especially in terms of the climate policy. Um, he's not listening. He's not learning. He's just pushing ahead with bad ideas. But I think we have to do something. And I know the prime minister said after that loss, we have a lot of work to do. And, and, and that's, that's a big statement to make. We do have a lot of work to do to get back the trust of Canadians. So George Chahal sent a letter to Brenda Shanahan, who's the National Caucus Chair, saying that he and eight other MPs had signed this letter calling for a National Caucus meeting. Are you one of the eight MPs who signed that letter? No. So, okay, so you're not one of the eight, but you do support its, its intention to have a National Caucus meeting. Yes, definitely. If nothing else, uh, David, it'll let people clear the year and then start off, walk out of that room, uh, united as you like or divided as you like. but. It's if you want it to be divided, if you don't have that caucus meeting, you're, you're driving a wedge. And I think it would serve everybody better to have that in-person caucus meeting. OK, so the, exactly what's on their minds. The next scheduled caucus meeting is not until September, as I understand it, I believe, um, you know, which is quite quite a quite a bit of time away. Do you think yeah. they will wait until then? Do you think they can wait until then? What are the consequences if they do wait? I don't think they can wait till then, because I think the uh, the feelings of caucus members now, for a lot of them, mm. are that they're, they're not getting through to the Prime Minister, which is rare. Usually the Prime Minister is there to listen to caucus and to listen to individuals. But uh, on this one, I think uh, it's not getting through, or somebody who's ever advising the Prime Minister is saying that's something you might want to stay away from right now, let the dust settle. But uh, I think it should be done sooner rather than later. If it was held this week, next week, or the week after, if I get a notice, 
I'll be there. So you're not calling for the prime minister to leave. You, you, you're content if he stays on as leader, if that is the will of caucus. I mean, who do you ultimately think Ken McDonald should make that choice? Should it be Justin Trudeau and his advisors, or should it be the Liberal caucus? Where, where do you stand on that? I think it, it would probably be a bit of both, mm. because the prime minister is the prime minister. He's the leader of the party, and uh, he's got to make a decision as well. But I think it starts with having an in-person caucus meeting and let everybody vent. And at the end of the day, if, it, if a majority wants the prime minister to leave, maybe he'll leave. I don't know. But uh, I think that got to happen first. OK, one last, start. one last quick question. You said before that this government was nearing its best before date. Um, St. Paul's uh, may have been an expiration notice of some kind. Do you think this party can turn things around the way things are right now in time for the next election? If they do, I think it'll be somewhat of a miracle to turn it around. And, and that's not the reason why I've decided not to run. I decided long before this that I wouldn't be running in the next election. Uh, but I do think if we want to get any chance of saving what's left of the Liberal Party, it is to start off with that caucus meeting and uh, get everybody back on side if there's such a thing or everybody move into one direction. That was wow. a very interesting answer. Wow. All right, so... What do you glean from that? So, I think what that means is that there's been a lot of chatter um, between the backbenchers. I think this means that there's been this feeling growing over time. Shame on them for not voicing this earlier. And or maybe they've tried. Maybe they have tried. We don't know. We're could not in be. that caucus. They could have tried very, very hard indeed. Could be. We don't know. But but if you try really hard and you're not getting the results for Canadians, then you go to the press. So you didn't try hard enough. Um, so that's, that's number one. Number two, um, he wants the prime minister to step down. He thinks that Trudeau needs to go and that... Sounds like the majority of caucus thinks he needs to go. And he thinks that that must happen and it must happen right now in order to save what's left of this Liberal Party. And it's as we said, they're going to lose no matter what. And here's a Liberal, a current Liberal MP telling you that they're going to lose no matter what. And it's just a matter of how much. So it sounds like they want this internal caucus meeting where they can basically all stand up and say, Trudeau, you're done, get out. Because and remember, the Liberal Party does not have a mechanism in place to depose a leader. Right. Uh, the Conservatives definitely do. I believe the NDP do as well. But for some reason that we don't know, the Liberal Party took that out of their governing documents and their charter. Immediately before Trudeau joined. Right. So that's a little bit too convenient it's, for me. It's kind, of, it's, kind of, it's kind of like negotiating a contract with a hockey player in free agency season and uh, them asking for a no movement clause uh, before joining the team and the team granting that. That's basically what's happened with Trudeau. So, um, but here's the thing. If Trudeau grants this in-person caucus meeting and you have over a hundred people stand up and point at you and say, you're done. You can have the biggest ego in the world. How are you going to say no? When an entire room of people surround you and say, we don't want you anymore. Get out. Mutiny. You, you have to resign. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you do because they can all say, or else. Well, I mean, Again, when there are certain votes in the House, and especially when it's confidence votes, the party is at what's called a level three whip, meaning that they all have to vote the way the leader wants them to vote. If or they, you suffer consequences. Right. If they don't, then they are they can be kicked out of caucus. They can be put on, um, like, I don't even know the proper term. Like They can be put on, like, lesser duty. Um, they can be kicked out of cabinet. There's all sorts of things that can happen. But technically, like, they can still vote however they want. 
So if Justin Trudeau keeps on this path, it is entirely possible that Liberal MPs within his own party could be so disgruntled that they would vote against him in a confidence vote. And some people say, oh, they'd never do that. Well, I, I challenge that. It's happened in the past. I challenge that. Because not not with this Liberal Party, but it has happened in the past. And, and you say, well, why? Why would they do that? Because they're going to look at it in terms of just simple math. So if they say nothing and accept Trudeau and they wait until 2025, they have a year of carbon tax complaining from the conservatives, of cost of living going up, of mortgages maturing, of carbon tax accumulation. It's going to be bad over the next year for the liberals. They will they're going to be, you know, in a dead heat with the NDP for, for losing party status. That's how bad it can get. So they're looking at that versus cut our losses and topple the government now, show their constituents, look, I voted against Trudeau because I agree he needed to go and hopefully win back some favor, win back some of these liberal voters that are just choosing not to vote because Trudeau is in power. So it's just a numbers game at that point. That is why they may do that, because it is just a matter of simple math. And not only that, I think it's the right thing to do. I think Canadians everywhere think it's the right thing to do. Okay, that was Ken McDonald. As I said, he was the first person to reply to that email that Wayne Long sent. The second person to reply to that email was Mark Garrison, who said everybody should stop replying all to vent their frustration, and he's here now uh, to speak publicly about his concerns. Mark Garrison, uh, thanks for being here. You, you heard what Ken McDonald had to say. Had to say. Uh, what do you make of his assessment of the state of things for your party and your caucus? Well, I think that Ken is right, that there is a lot of uh, concern out there. I mean, we um, suffered uh, a pretty significant blow. Uh, uh, we should not have lost uh, that by-election in St. Paul. Having said that, um, I think that this gives us some time to, ref to reflect on the, the, the choices that we've made, the communication that we're doing, how we're talking to Canadians, how we're listening to Canadians, and it gives us the opportunity to reassess uh, and to regroup and to continue fighting for Canadians. At, at the end of the day, David, um, there's no doubt in my mind um, that uh, you know if we uh, move towards uh, the alternative, which is Pierre Polyev, uh, Canadians are going to be a lot worse off. And I don't say that in a way to try to uh, scare people. I, I mean that realistically, if you look at his record when he was in government before. Right. You, uh, you support the Prime Minister's leadership. You want him to stay. You want him to lead you into the next election. Because unlike Ken McDonald, you are running again, correct? I am running again. And I can tell you as an MP that has chosen to put his name forward again, uh, I support the Prime Minister and the leadership that he's given us uh, um, and taken us through, in particular, the really challenging times over the last five years. When you look at everything we've been through with COVID and with in inflation uh, and the impacts of that. Um, it's no mystery that um, uh, incumbent governments throughout the world have a lot of focus put on them right now. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And so I think that what has happened in St. Paul's and what continues to happen in the discussions that we're having is how do we look at what's happened uh, assess it and determine the best way to move forward um, and into the fight that we have against Pierre Polyev and Conservatives uh, uh, in, in the coming years. To do that, though, you've got George Hall and the unnamed eight, whoever they are, uh, plus one more in a named Ken McDonald saying you need to have a national caucus meeting and you need to do it soon and you need to do it in person because to get a clear sense of exactly how much support there is within the party, you kind of need to have everyone or within the caucus. You need to have them all in the same room for the prime minister. Why, why, why are they wrong that you, this should happen soon? Oh, I'm not uh, disagreeing with the fact that we need to, to get together and talk. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is, is that, and I think it's important for people to know, it's not the prime minister's office that determines when a caucus meeting is going to happen. We have a national uh, caucus chair, uh, Brenda Shanahan, who's a very capable individual of organizing and pulling people together for a meeting. We do have these kind of meetings from time to time. Um, that are unscheduled when certain events come up. And if that's the will of caucus and, and, our, and our chair determines that that's what we need to do, then of course we're going to do that. And we're what do you think? To should, should, you get, should you get together soon to talk about this? Because everyone's talking. They're just not talking to each other yeah, in the same I think, room. I, I, I think having communications together is a lot better than having communications on a 160-person thread email um, that you referenced previously. So I certainly think that uh, having the opportunity to talk together and to uh, share our ideas together in the private setting that we treat traditionally do that uh, in our caucus meetings is, is, is the best way to be having these discussions. But right now there's nothing on the books until September. Can you really wait until well, September? We, well, we don't know that. We know that uh, Mr. Shaw's put in a request for this and that um, our chair has had that for a couple days now and we'll see what comes of it. Damage control. <laughs> Poor 
damage control at that. Well, and it's interesting because if you look at the current polling for Gerritsen's riding of Kingston and the Islands, it's a three-way tie. The Conservatives are leading right now at 32%, with the Liberals following extremely closely behind at 31%, and the NDP hot on their tail at 30%. Well, and recall the Toronto by-election, the Conservatives were seven points behind, and they ended up winning. So... What we've learned with the Toronto by-election is what political analysts have been kind of saying over the last six months or so is that the conservative polling is underrepresented actually in the polling numbers because more people will, you know, will, will be inclined to go out and vote when there's actually an election that may not be actually, you know, reflected in the polling numbers. So, um, so it would be very interesting if Mr. Gerritsen, you know, lost his seat. And I think he has a very good chance of doing that. Um, the other interesting thing is, is Gerritsen, he's, he's trying to talk very carefully here because usually, usually the liberals come on here with this arrogance and this attitude that is just anti-conservative or anti-Canadian. But he can't do that right now because... He's not just talking to CBC. He's not just talking to Canadians. He's talking to Liberal MPs as well. So he has to be very careful what he's saying. And if he says, oh, we don't need a caucus meeting, <laughs> what do you think the reaction would be with revolt. the backbenchers? Absolute revolt. Right. I mean, could you imagine, like, as a backbencher, hearing that, oh, well, you know what? Your concerns are invalid. We don't need a caucus meeting because we don't need to hear your invalid concerns. Right, because Mark Gerritsen is not going on that show just on a whim and with Mark Gerritsen, you know, talking points. This this is this has been directed, okay? So all the other MPs are looking at Gerritsen and they're saying, what is the prime minister saying today? That's how they're looking at this. So... They have to be very careful because as the minister, when you're on the seat, when you're on a television show, you're speaking for cabinet, you're speaking for the prime minister. It's a big responsibility. So he had to be very careful. Yes, of course he has to say, oh yeah, you know, it's all, it's all, uh, you know, it's better to get together. And then, uh, you know, CBC host says, yeah, well, everybody is talking right now, just not all together. And that's dangerous to let that go, to let that fester. Well, and especially when you have a caucus that's 155 people, that's a lot of people. Like imagine a company of 155 people and you have your different departments, right? And your different factions essentially and and a crisis happens. Yeah, like they within the Liberal Party, they'll kind of like break off and make their own factions. Maybe some of them are really, really pro-environment. Maybe some of them are really, really anti-environment. So you get like these these different groups within the larger group. And that's dangerous because that's how you can have um, like sub parties form. Well, and again, it's 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 very interesting because you hear Gerritsen and these people say, oh, well, you know, we've, you know, the Toronto by-election was shocking. You know, we're listening, we're learning a lot. But again, and this was reported by the CBC, one of the main messages from the people in that riding that were liberal voters is they won't vote liberal until Trudeau's gone. So if you're really listening that's the most important message you need to hear across Canada. Well, and I mean, I know personally people who that's their their belief. Um, my parents have some friends who are very, very active within the Liberal Party. Like they're not MPs or anything, but they are, you know, they help with the fundraising. They're, they're party members. And they've said, we will not vote in the next election if Trudeau is still party leader. So... It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And if there is an in-person caucus meeting, it's going to be a media frenzy. And it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out of that. And it may be the signal that Trudeau is days away from resigning his post. And if he doesn't, oh boy, the Liberals are in for a very rough ride until the next election is whenever it may be.